Hi everyone, this is Moni from BTE Magic. Welcome back to my channel. In the video today, I would like to show you guys an experiment which I conducted just yesterday with Pearson score test. I got 90 in reading for test D and I only completed the reading section, read aloud, summarize written text, highlight correct summary and highlight incorrect words. It's also important to note that in this test, I got 32 speaking by only doing read aloud. So let's watch the recording of me doing the test and you will see that I skipped a lot of tasks and only attempted reading related questions.
credit unions are non-profit organizations that were imported to the United States from Germany in the early 1900s. They were regulated in 1934 by the Federal Credit Union Act, which limits membership to groups having a common bond of occupation or association. Groups from particular geographical areas also were eligible to join credit unions. Credit unions are non-profit organizations that were imported to the United States from Germany in the early 1900s. They were regulated in 1934 by the Federal Credit Union Act, which limits membership to groups having a common bond or occupation or association. Groups from particular geographical areas also were eligible to join credit unions. There are two main types of market research. Quantitative research involves collecting a lot of information by using techniques such as questionnaires and other forms of survey. Qualitative research involves working with smaller samples of consumers, often asking them to discuss products and services while researchers take notes about what they have to say. There are two main types of market research. Quantitative research involves collecting a lot of information by using techniques such as questionnaires and other forms of survey. Qualitative research involves working. There are two main types of market research. Quantitative research involves collecting a lot of information by using techniques such as questionnaires and other forms of survey. Qualitative research involves working with smaller samples of consumers, often asking them to discuss products and services while researchers take notes about what they have to say. This course provides an introduction to the history and development of the British legal system. Its aim is to, to describe the evolution of the common law of England, the legal system of England and the legal profession of England, and to introduce you to the study of constitutions as law and to the legal aspects of constitutional systems of government. This course provides an introduction to the history and development of the British legal system. Its aim is to describe the evolution of the common law of England, the legal system of England. Okay. This course provides an introduction to the history and development of the British legal system. Its aim is to describe the evolution of the common law of England, the legal system of England and the legal profession of England and to introduce you to the study of constitutions as law and to the legal aspects of constitutional systems of government. This is an extremely useful resource which ranks books and academic papers on the subject not only in terms of their reliability, but also their readability. As a result, it is likely to save students time and effort that would otherwise have been spent working through a lot of dense text before finding the one they really need. This is an extremely useful resource which ranks books and academic papers on the subject, not only in terms of their reliability, but also their readability. This is an extremely res useful resource which ranks books and academic papers on the subject not only in terms of their reliability but also their readability. As a result, it is likely to save students time and effort that would otherwise have been spent working through a lot of dense text before finding the one they really need. Closure activities allow participants to consolidate learning, say goodbye to group mates, and attend to any unfinished pieces prior to the ending of the group experience. Generally, these activities involve some reflection upon what has been learned or accomplished during the preceding time together and a sharing of those thoughts or insights with other participants. Closure activities allow participants to consolidate learning, say goodbye to group mates, and attend to any unfinished pieces prior to the ending. Closure activities allow participants to consolidate learning, say goodbye to group mates, and attend to any unfinished pieces prior to the ending of the group experience. 
Generally, these activities involve some reflection upon what has been learned or accomplished during the preceding time together and a sharing of those thoughts or insights with other participants. Thus, language acquisition might be like other biological functions. The linguistic clumsiness of tourists and art students might be the price we pay for the linguistic genius we displayed as babies, just as the this decrepitude of age is the price we pay for the vigor of youth. Thus, language acquisition might be like other biological functions. The linguistic clumsiness of tourists and students might be the price we pay for the linguistic genius we've displayed as babies, just as the decrepitude of age is the price we pay for the vigor of youth.
Yeah, so I actually got interested in non-human animals by actually hanging out with them. Um, as, a, as a college student, I had the opportunity to actually do some research with monkeys, and that actually brought me down to a very nice, warm Caribbean island where I got to hang out with a bunch of monkeys for the first time. And I think I can remember the moment when I first got interested, not just in their cognition, but particularly in their emotion, when I was hanging out on a beach that I was finding really beautiful and it was warm and there was a breeze. And I noticed there was a monkey sitting right beside me who was like looking out into the water and seemed to be experiencing exactly the same things I was. And it just caused me to think like, what, what does he know about the world? What does he know about the scene? Is he enjoying it? Does he find this beautiful? Um, and it was kind of a fascinating moment because I realized that you know, we now have these cool tools in cognitive science where we can answer some of these, these big questions. Whether you have a pet dog or a cat or even a goldfish, right, you can't help but wonder what they're experiencing and if they experience some of the same things that you do. Computers have always been good at doing things that are really complicated for us humans. Things like crunching insanely large numbers and running complex algorithms. On the other hand, computers have a really hard time recognizing a particular voice or face in a crowd, something most kids learn to do before they're even out of diapers. But things are changing fast. Over the next decade or so, machines will more easily mimic inherently human abilities. And they'll learn to do it much the same way we do, through experience. Experience, in this case, means computers will be fed data patterns over and over again until they're able to automatically identify a particular sound or image on their own. This process is called machine learning. If there's a single piece of social science research that's really inspired you, what would it be? I think it was a book that Richard, my co-author, wrote and published in 1996. And it came out when I was a PhD student at the University of Berkeley. And it was called Unhealthy Societies. And we used to fight over it in the library because we, we couldn't afford books. And somebody would take it out and then you know, we'd immediately put in a request to get it back. So it, people only had it for a very short time. But that was a book about inequality and about health, but a very, very rich text with lots of examples. Cooking is such an amazing way to learn about science. Many of us cook every day, but when you start to think about why the recipes work, why is it that when you knead bread it has this remarkable texture, or why is it that candy recipes work as they do, or how is it that you cook eggs in a way that it comes out to be perfect, you immediately are led to thinking about basic principles in science. <laughs> 